Honestly, the more I look at it, I really do have mad scientist hair. What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a channel favorite deck profile and that's Dino. But we're not just playing any Dino build, we're playing Dino OTK in today's video. Now in the past, especially more recently, we did Branded Dino, then Verite got hit, and then we did Scrap Dino, which was more of a combo deck, and in today's video we're doing a Dino OTK deck. Now the really cool thing about this deck is that it's still really really competitive in today's format, but if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one if you guys want to see any of the past dino profiles they're all already on the channel on top of that if you guys want to see combos they're on the channel as well so you guys can check that out so i really hope you guys stay tuned i really hope you guys enjoy and with that guys let's get into the deck profile okay so to get started off with the deck profile i do want to say that some of the dino ratios are more or less standard on top of that like these are kind of the same things that you guys do over and over but i am going to mention it again because some of this stuff is really really important to know and to start off of course we're playing three ov raptor the best normal summon in the deck you have to be playing three ov raptor three baby cerasaurus as well as one petite pteranodon yeah i know some people like to play two baby and this is the one that i want to talk about the most but in this build three baby is very very important especially because you are playing the scrap package and this really helps you otk going second because you can just keep looping babies you can keep going with this so this is very very important as well as the one petite pteranodon specifically in this deck because it's an otk build a going second build petite is really good because petite can get you into something like a pancreatops so you do want to be playing the one of this then we're playing the two archosaurs of course to pop the babies which is really really nice as well as one miscellaneous horse now if anyone who hasn't watched the combo videos you guys can go see the combo videos on the channel i've done a ton of dino combos however i do want to say that misc plus ov or misc plus baby or baby plus ov all these two card combos are all full combo for you so just keep that in mind because uh yeah this deck is very very powerful so even if you are somehow forced to go first the nice thing with this deck is that you can still combo going first second doesn't really matter you're always going to have something to do here so of course you're playing the one misc then we're playing two conductor tyranno one pancreatops one giant rex which is a really good extender for you and then one dogoran again you still are playing a going second deck and there are some pesky cards that sometimes are going to be hard to out so dogoran is just going to be always good for that situation now you can argue to play Godarla. I know some people will play Godarla because of the barrier statue with Falunderies, which makes a lot of sense, but Dogoran just makes more sense in this deck because it's a dino for you that you can use for Conductor, and just it being a dino is very, very important. So yeah, one Dogoran I think is very, very important in today's format just because it can break pretty much any little monster board, so like this is very, very important. So that's it for the dinos here that you guys can see. Then for the spells, we're playing two of the Double Evolution Pill as well as three Fossil Dig, and I kind of want to stop here for a second because you guys may notice I'm not playing Lost World, and yes, I think Lost World is a fantastic card Card. however in today's format i just don't think it's good enough and what i mean by that is it's too slow the thing is unless you have an ov that is going to resolve with the lost world lost world itself is not going to be doing that much for you a lot of the time putting a token on your opponent's side of the field could actually be very good for your opponent if somehow you can't out the board so that's why it's like i really wanted to make room in this deck for going second cards cards that can break your opponent's boards lost world is a great great card it just doesn't fit what the deck wants to do at the moment so that's why i'm not playing lost world right now now i know why a lot of people like to play that card i just want to say that this deck is essentially just maxing out on consistency and then being able to do what it does which is otk your opponent yes lost world is a great great card however it's like if it's not going to get you to the point where you're gonna win or you're gonna otk your opponent or if it doesn't help you beat your opponent then it's like okay we're doing it for the one situation where it can come up and that's not competitive right if you want to play as competitive as possible you really have to be as consistent as possible and maximize what your deck does best in this case this deck wants to break boards and otk so we're just going to maximize on that we don't want to play lost world where it's like oh but it can come up in this one situation it's like true but the whole point of this deck is you're not supposed to be in those situations you're supposed to break boards and you're supposed to otk so we're not playing lost world that's my little explanation there on why we're not playing lost world i hope you guys like kind of understand or see where i'm coming from especially from a competitive standpoint so yeah we're just playing three fossil dig as well as two double evolution pill then we're playing two scrap raptor as well as one scrap chimera this is really all you need this engine is really really good when you're trying to otk if you don't see your opponent has any hand traps you know there's a lot of times your opponent won't have cards in their hands you'll try to break through their boards and this package is really really strong because scrap wyvern in itself is really really good going second this card can pop cards your opponent controls which is really really nice it gives you a lot of advantage in that sense so i really like the scrap package just at two and one i think that's all you need this package is really really good and if you are forced to go first again this deck does specialize in going second but if you are forced to go first for any reason then this gives you access to your Borlode savage dragon so that's why you really really want to be able to be playing this card and then we're playing three pot of extravagance yes we're playing extrav not prosperity in this deck because it's an otk deck that's why we're not playing prosperity honestly i wanted to play prosperity because i think 
think Prosperity in general is just a better card in a Dino deck than Extravagance is because unlike Trap decks, it's like you're not trying to draw as many traps as possible on this deck. You really just want to dig into that one piece you need because like I said, this deck really functions off two pieces. If you have an OV plus Baby, OV plus Misk, misc plus baby you're perfectly fine right so this deck really functions on getting the extra piece that it's missing however extravagance just makes sense in this build because you are playing an otk style build so you don't want to be using prosperity and then not being able to otk your opponent so extravagance is the way to go here then we're playing one called by the grave then we are playing the a lot of hand traps on a lot of go second cards and this is what i meant by we're maximizing our efforts essentially to go second and otk our opponent so we're playing three ash Three Nibiru. Nibiru is really, really good in this format, and it's also really good in general because when you're playing an OTK deck like this one, then Nibiru becomes really good because it's putting a body on your side of the board that can do damage, but also it's breaking your opponent's board or not even letting your opponent make a board, which is really, really nice. So Nibiru is really good, and then three Imperm, of course, as well as three Lightning Storm and one Red Rebu. So the nice thing about Lightning Storm is it covers the back row matchups as well. As you guys can see, we're not really playing a lot of back row hate or any back row hate at all other than the Lightning Storm. This, of course, covers monster matchups as well. Like if your opponent's making Chi Chao Baron and attack position and you go lightning storm they're essentially forced to use the negate on the lightning storm and then you're like okay now i can just go and continue and win this game essentially if you're talking about sword soul matchup if you're talking about a lot of other matchups they're forced to use the negate on the lightning storm so that's why i really like this card and then red reboot for the back row so that's it for the deck it's 40 cards on the dot it's very very consistent keep in mind i want to say something about the imperm here you don't have to shotgun the imperm every single time if you see that your opponent can play through an imperm because there's a lot of situations where people can and you see that they like normal sound a monster and they have like four cards at hand and you don't think the Imperm is going to break the board, that's fine. Let them make the board because Imperm is a board breaking card. Going second, you can just activate your Imperm right away and target that one monster that has a negate or something on it and either force out that negate or it's going to get negated regardless. So you're going to get rid of that card. So keep in mind, Imperm is really, really good going second because even if you don't shotgun it as a hand trap, you can use it as a board breaking card going second. So then moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing two Lagia as well as two Dolka. This only really comes up if you're forced to go first, but two Lagia, two Dolka are really, really good to Dugaris like to be honest this deck doesn't really need the Dugaris to OTK but there's a lot of situations where just making it actually just helps you win also the draw can be very powerful as well even if you're not using the effect to double the attack this card is still really really good so you want to be playing the Dugaris one Link Karibo two Pentastag now I will say two things about this extra deck the first thing I will say is you guys can cut the Pentastag to one and play two Link Karibo that's another option for you the only time you're ever going into Link Karibo specifically is for the Arcosaur if you need to but a lot of the time that's just only if you completely brick and you need the extra monster for the pill. That's the only real reason, but otherwise you don't need Link Kribo that much. I really do like two Pentasteg because Pentasteg does help you OTK with Conductor. So I really, really like this at two. Two Scrap Wyvern. Again, the reason we're playing twos of everything is because of Extrav, right? If you were playing Prosperity, you wouldn't have to do this, but because we're playing Extrav, you are wanting to play two of each. So two Pentasteg, two Scrap Wyvern, I think is really, really important. Now for all my budget players out there, because this deck other than Access Code here really is just completely budget i guess you could say lightning storm is kind of expensive but you can also swap lightning storms for harpy's feather duster regeki cosmic cyclone there's a lot of cards that you can easily swap lightning storm for so for anyone who is playing budget this is kind of this section is just for you guys and essentially what i do want to say is lightning storms again like i said can be swapped with harpy's regeki whatnot axis code i'm playing two of this because of extrav but i know axis code is a very expensive card you guys don't actually need this card at all the only reason i'm playing it is because with scrap wyvern you can get four monsters on your board pretty easily for axis code which is kind of nice so if you guys can afford the access code or even if you guys just have one access code just play the one and play another card as your 15th card you do not need access code in this deck this card does not come up as often as you think this deck has inherent ways to win i mean you have conducted tyrannal it's literally the best boss monster in the game so like you don't need the access code but if you have access to it yes you want to be playing it because there are situations where it can come up you can play boral sword dragon as well boral sword doesn't come up as much because i don't think you want to commit at least three monsters whereas access code only needs needs to but yeah if you guys don't have the access code don't worry you guys can cut the access code don't stress about it this can be anything else doesn't even have to be a link four it could be more of your link twos it could be whatever you really want it to be so yeah for all my budget players out there don't stress you can still play this deck at a budget level which is really really nice and then we're playing two savage dragon again the only reason i'm playing two savage dragon is because we're playing the scrap raptor engine and that's if you're forced to go first again right if you're going second you won't really make it unless you see a weird situation i'm going to be honest with you there might be a weird situation where you can actually use it going second just because it does become a big body on board when you equip it with the scrap wyvern 
So potentially you guys can make it going second. Oh, and I do want to say another card that you guys can play in here for all my budget players is Apollyusa. Apollyusa is pretty good going first. You can make that, of course, with your Scrap Raptor combo as well. So you guys can play Apollo if you guys want to play Apollo, just a more budget option than Axis Code. But I just want to show you guys that if you're playing this exactly like how I'm playing it, or if you're just playing it at a casual, more budget level, that's perfectly fine because you can still win with this deck even without cards like Axis Code or Lightning Storm. You just really want to maximize your going second card. So like I said, if you don't have Lightning Storm, just put in a Harpy's Feather Duster, put in some Margekis maybe, just anything that'll bait negates out essentially. And then instead of the access code, you guys can put in any other Link Monster. But I want to show you guys that this can be played as both a budget deck as well as this version that I'm showing you guys here. This deck is very, very competitive. I'm telling you guys, I think you really, really need to try it out for yourselves. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope I explained my reasoning for the card choices really, really well. This deck is really, really powerful, can be very competitive in today's format. You can use some of the most broken cards in the game in this deck, which why wouldn't you, right? So this deck is very competitive, very, very fun for all my dino lovers. I think you guys are going to like this one. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. If you guys want to see more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this. If you guys want to see vlogs, pack openings, all that stuff. It's on the channel. So I hope you guys enjoy. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.